Hello, my name is Duke. I come from The Bump. This is a popular game that was just release, released on the Xbox Live Arcade platform, but this is not the Xbox Live Arcade version. This is the original version, released for the personal computer. Welcome to the chat room, CPC Gamer, Darian Mask, Enzu, Draragma, Just Drop, and Private Steve. Thank you all for coming. Let me type something into the chat room so that I might sync it up later. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I got love in my Spelunky. Enter! <clears throat> so, uh, apparently it's been a while. Uh, the last time I streamed, we were still in uh, the throes of Retro Game Week. But uh, Retro Game Week is now, uh, it has now come and gone. And it got cut tragically short by uh, the storm of the century, basically. Um, there was a huge storm that caught me by surprise, caused me to lose power. Fortunately, I only lost power uh, for a few, a few minutes. Um, but I ended up having to cancel the stream anyway because I didn't know how stable the power situation would be. Um, Mars Draconis lost power for a long time and he ended up staying here for a period of several days. Um, which, you know, it was cool. We, we had fun hanging out. We tried to do some local streaming while he was here, but uh, I still have some uh, work to do when it comes to getting the audio set up correctly. It didn't really work out. Private Steve says my power outage was out for five seconds. So wait, if your power outage was out, so that means you did have power for five seconds? That's pretty horrible. I mean, I assume that's what my outage was out means. Sorry, I'm being a dick. I know what you mean. Well, speaking of being a dick, I, uh... I posted a request, oh, uh, hello Agent Rainer 96 I posted a request for questions on my Formspring account, which I recently opened back up again, um, with the guarantee that I would answer any questions live on the stream. Guarantee will not be honored. And uh, I ended up getting two questions, so uh, I'll go on ahead and handle both of those now. Uh, welcome Tivinez to the chat room. Uh, the first question comes from Anonymous, and Anonymous asks, What would you do for a Klondike bar? Moving on, our second question comes from, uh, well, to protect this person's anonymity, I will refer to him or her as CPCG. You know what, that's a little too obvious. Let's call him C Gamer. C Gamer asks, Hey dude, sup? Not much, what's up with you? This has been Question and Answers with Duke. I hope this has been enlightening for all of you. So yeah, I'm back. Um... I think I asked that months ago. Well, someone else uh, apparently asked it again. So how about that Steam sale, huh? A lot of good games on that. Boy oh boy, I spent too much money. I really didn't spend that much money, um, but I bought some games that I really don't need because I already have such a huge backlog of games in my Steam list that I haven't played. I really didn't need to be buying any new ones. Uh, let's see, I can get Spectacles, I can get a Pitcher's Mint, I can get Climbing Gloves, or I can get Spike Shoes. Uh, the Climbing Gloves are actually insanely useful. I think I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. Oh crap, what's the buy button again? Ah, there we go. Is there the shopkeeper here like in Xbox Live? Yep, the shopkeeper works pretty much the same way. If you steal from him or attack while you're inside the store, 
he will fuck you up pretty badly. I think that answers your question. Yes. CPC Gamer says, oh man, that guy is a comedic genius. And if he was here, he'd say nothing. Painful series of events at work, but all the better for being here. Yeah, that, that C Gamer guy, he's, uh, he is an attractive and successful fella. I would buy him a pint, assuming it was a he, and assuming he was from England, because we don't have pints here in the United States of America. I mean, we do, but we don't call them pints. We call them bro glasses. Hmm. I think I may have fucked myself out of getting that chest. So, uh, for anyone who's played the Xbox version, but hasn't seen the original version, uh, you suck, because I, this was, this was the first game I ever streamed, actually, I think. Um, I haven't streamed it in a while, that was a couple years ago, but, uh, it's a great game to stream. Uh, BakerBot, welcome. Uh, it's kind of like the Binding of Isaac, in that, uh, the levels are randomly generated, and, uh, if you die, you go back to the beginning every time. Now you can pay a man to build you a shortcut and uh, hopefully I can get a little work done on that during the stream. This is a totally new save by the way so anything I might have done in the previous streams is lost to the ages. Damn it. Yeah, the ghost was about to get me anyway. So yeah this is how dying works. Um, we have to go back to the beginning of the first level. Now if we can make it to the shortcut digger, we can pay him a certain amount of money. And it's, it's a lot of money, so we're not going to be able to pay it all at once. It'll have to be over the course of several, uh, several plays. But uh, once we pay for a shortcut, we don't have to start at the beginning every single time. We can warp. Damn it, why didn't I not grab onto that ledge? We can warp. Damn it! Uh, back to uh, back to whatever level the shortcut man was on. Ah, damn it! I have to get used to these controls again. Did I die on purpose? Yeah. Uh, let's say that's exactly what I did. Just to demonstrate, die. But yeah. Um, now, the levels aren't completely random, of course. They are uh, sti stitched together from uh, randomized segments. But it's good enough to give the, the appearance of total randomness, I'd say. I really need to uh, not hold down the run button the whole time. Because that's what always gets me in trouble. You get impatient, and you run everywhere, and you end up running into trouble. I wanted to uh, use a bomb here, so I... Well, that didn't work. The idea was to set that trap off because I have no way of getting past it without getting hit. But I wasted a bomb. Well, let's waste another one, I guess. There we go. It's something like you find the tunnel guy the fifth time, you, you complete a level block, and every time after. Yeah, that makes that sounds about right. I know you never get the tunnel guy until uh, until you beat the first section. Uh, the first section is the uh, actually I, I'm not really sure what this, what this is called the cave I guess. And then the next section is like a tropical uh, jungle kind of area. And then the section after that is like a really weird ice cavern place. And I've made it as far as section three, but uh, I've never made it past that. This game is very difficult. Was the question thing the announcement? No, uh, I do have an announcement. Um, a huge announcement. Probably the biggest announcement ever on the stream. Besides uh, announcing that I would stream bi-weekly. And uh, that, that'll come up towards the end of the stream. So uh, everyone hold on to your hats because this announcement will blow you away. It is literally the most exciting thing ever to happen.
please hold for one moment while I procure a beverage. Just Drop says, I got a hundred bucks on having a love child. Yeah, and CPC Gamer said something like, Yugi is the father? And I don't know who Yugi is. Oh, I'm not going to be able to jump past these without dying, am I? Well, there are plenty of bombs here I can buy. So uh, I will go ahead and pick up a bag of those. And then I will just bomb my way through here. You have three uh, weapons in your arsenal starting out. Well, one weapon, one tool, and one weapon slash tool. You have your whip, which I've demonstrated to great effect by whipping it and whipping it good. You have the bombs, which you can use to blow open pretty much anything you see uh, is bombable. And you have the rope, which can be used to get you out of a tight situation. And it is very possible to get trapped without uh, having a rope to get out or a bomb to bomb your way out. Which is why you have to be uh, conservative with what resources you have available. You can actually walk to the spikes, don't jump on them. I don't know what that means. I mean, you can walk through the spikes, as long as you don't land on the pointy part. I think that's what he means. But that wouldn't have helped me in that situation, because I wouldn't have been able to, uh, to jump out in that particular instance. And I believe that is a feature that carries over to the uh, the Xbox Live version. So apparently that was intentional. He intentionally made it so you can walk through the spikes as long as you don't actually land on them. And I will demonstrate that uh, the next time I come to a thing of spikes. Uh, Oblivix, welcome to the chat room. And... Uh, Chester A. Arthur, welcome to the chat room. I'm very honored to have you here, Mr. President, sir. Speaking of presidents, I might have talked about this, oh shit, on the last stream. Uh, it's been a while, so I don't remember. But I read a book recently called Destiny of the, Re Destiny of the Republic. It's about, uh, damn. It's about former President James Garfield, and it is one of the best pieces of nonfiction I've ever read. Probably the best. I highly recommend it. Uh, he was assassinated, one of uh, four U.S. presidents to be assassinated, and uh, it is just a fascinating read. It is by. Oh, I'm going to blank on the name. But just look it up. Destiny of the Republic. So, let's see. What other media have I been consuming lately? Well, I have been trying to, uh... Trying to clear out some of the games in my backlog on Steam. To justify buying new games. Um... I finished Hard Reset. Which is probably one of my favorite first-person shooters. Um... Story-wise, it's a garbage nonsense. Ah, damn it. But, uh, here, I'll, I'll demonstrate walking through the spikes. As long as you don't land on the pointy bits, you're fine. But yeah, story-wise, hard reset is garbage, but mechanically, it is probably the best first-person shooter I've ever played. And they recently released uh, free DLC for, for anyone who owns the game. Or if you buy the game after the DLC comes out, it's all one package. It's hard reset extended edition and um, I'm actually kind of glad I waited for the DLC before I finished it because the ending would be kind of crappy if it weren't for the DLC uh, <clears throat> but it is a uh, a quality first person shooter I guess I've kind of been on a first person shooter kick lately because I also played through uh, Half-Life 2 episode 1 and uh, episode 2 
I uh, finished Half-Life 2 a while ago, but I'm just now getting around to uh, doing the episodes. And yeah, uh, quality quality gaming. Uh, Monothu, welcome to the chat room. Just Drop says, okay, my bladder is empty. Thanks for, your, thanks for announcing. Um, this information is important to the well-being of the stream. CPC Gamer says it's made by the same team that made Painkiller. Yeah, I have uh, I have several of the Painkiller games that I bought during a prior Steam sale when they were on sale for uh, you could get a, a huge pack of them for like ten bucks or something. And uh, I actually didn't know that Hard Reset was made by part of the Painkiller team uh, until recently. But now that I, now that I know that, I definitely want to go back and. Uh, and play through the painkiller games as well. Uh, let's see, do I want to use a rope to get to that box? I probably do, because boxes like that always have ropes or bombs in them. See, I used one rope and I got three in exchange, so I would say that is a good trade-off. Uh, Sword Thumb, welcome to the chat room, and Miderico, Mider welcome to the chat room. Duke, am I going to sacrifice the women? Uh, well, I mean, that depends. Uh, right now, I'm more inclined to sacrifice them rather than use them for their restorative properties uh, because I'm doing pretty well on health. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if I come across uh, an altar and there's a lady nearby, uh, yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to sacrifice her. Did I say the thing I'm supposed to say to get the subtitle synced? Yes, I did. I actually remembered first thing. Now, the best way to deal with these big spiders is to throw a bomb into the web. It'll stick to the web and it will kill them almost every time. And that's not the bomb button. <sighs> Again, it's been a while. Uh, this is the paste. Uh, it gives you sticky bombs. So now every bomb sticks as if you were throwing it into a web. Uh, Prince Mezzo, welcome to the chat room. Sore Thumb says, I've got my family here, so you're on mute until I have headphones on. Well, this is a family-friendly stream. You know, I don't want to uh, step on any toes. I don't want to offend anybody. That trap is going to shoot an arrow into my fucking head. Damn it! Alright, Ghost is coming, so I better- Oh, shit! I forgot the bomb was sticking there. Why does this one look different than the one on XBLA? Well, this game uh, predates the XBLA version by about three years. Um, the original one went for a very retro style, and uh, the XBLA version, the graphics were cleaned up, but it's still the same basic game. Uh, there are some changes. I haven't played much of the XBLA version, but from what I can tell, uh, the Tunnel Digger, oh shit, functions uh, a lot differently. Um, in this game, the Tunnel Digger, you just pay him money every time, but in the XBLA version, he'll ask for different items every time you meet him. He'll ask for like ropes or bombs or other more difficult to obtain items. So the tunnels can be uh, a little trickier in the XBLA version. Uh, this version is free, by the way. So if you don't have an Xbox, or you don't have the 15 bucks to spend, which, you know, if you do have the 15 bucks, I would recommend spending it, because it is an excellent game. But uh, just Google Spelunky PC download or whatever, and I'm sure you can find it. Now, this game does not have the co-op element that, uh, that the XBLA version has. Uh, which is unfortunate, but the co-op version, I don't know, I'm a little disappointed that there's no online mode. Uh, Parasite Omega and Lalboy88, welcome to the chat room. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that the XBLA version doesn't have an online mode, because really it would work a lot better if you could play online. Um, as it is, the camera just follows one of the uh, Spelunkers, and uh... Oh great, she's probably going to get squished. Nope, she made it. Uh, in the XBLA version, oh by the way, the boulder, much more deadly in the XBLA version. Um, 
yeah, the ca when you play co-op, damn it, the camera just follows one of the splunkers, and uh, so you can't really split up or anything. So yeah, that's a little disappointing. It was still fun, but it would just work much better if there was an online mode. I mean, I, I understand, you know, that takes time to implement, and you know, they didn't have that much time to get the game out. Hope my crappy internet can keep up with the stream. Well, I don't have the uh, the bitrate on the stream turned up extremely high, so uh, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Hey Duke. Hey Lord Tamar. For those of you just joining us, welcome. Big announcement coming at the end of the stream. It's huge. I don't like to throw around the word monumental, but uh, but yeah, I would call it monumental. Sorry about that, connection went down on me. Oh, no problem. Duke Falcon Punch a boulder. I don't know what that means. I've heard the term Falcon Punch on the internet before. I don't know where it originates or why it's supposed to be funny. Please help. By the way, I rescued a maiden and I got an idol in the last level. The maiden uh, gives you an extra hit point every time and the idol uh, gives you a lot of money. It's from Super Smash Brothers, I think. Well, I never played it. Yeah, in the XBLA version, the repercussions for getting the idol are much more severe. Uh, the boulder hurts more. Uh, it can go, you know, through multiple levels of terrain, not just r roll along one level like like this one did. And uh, yeah, it's more difficult to uh, to acquire. Uh, she'll probably be okay if I just drop her down there. Also, uh, in the XBLA version, it's not necessarily a maiden every time. Uh, I mean, or rather, it's not a woman every time. You can set it to be a, uh, a man or a dog. Or you can have it be random every time. You never play Smash Brothers. Nope! I have no interest. Damn it. Damn it! My attempt to use the maiden as a weapon failed. Alright. Well, I still have three health, so... Could be worse. Chester A. Arthur says, I don't blame you, it's not my type of game either, really. Yeah, I don't really like most fighting games. And Smash Brothers, I probably would like even less than a normal fighting game. Since it's not really good. Um, I like Soul Calibur. That's pretty much it. And even in that, I, I don't play for realsies, I just kind of mash buttons. Soul Calibur is probably the best fighting game you can play if you just want to mash buttons. Alright, the ghost is about to appear, so let me gather my loot and get the F out of here. If you dawdle too much in a level, then the ghost will appear. And uh, if it touches you, you instantly die. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, hightail it out. I only like Mortal Kombat, and I only play a Sub-Zero. Um, I used to play Mortal Kombat on the Genesis. Um, I don't know. I liked it at the time. I don't think I would play it now. Is the Ghost in the XPLA version 2? Uh, yes. <clears throat> and if I remember correctly, the Ghost in the XPLA version actually takes a little bit more time to come out. So you have a little bit of time to get to the exit if you're not close. But that might have just been uh, that particular level. Aw oh, man, there's a shop up there too. Ah, oh, there's climbing gloves. Okay, definitely worth using a rope to get in that. You always want to throw the pots. You never want to break them with your whip. Because if there's an enemy in it, if you break it with your whip, it'll immediately get a chance to hit you. So always throw it somewhere where you can reach the loot that falls out. Alright, let's use a rope here. Doing pretty well on money. Oh, I could get the cape though. Uh, I don't know which is better. The cape lets you float gently to the ground. The gloves let you climb any surface. 
I don't want to buy both of them because I don't want to spend too much money. I want to have a little bit of money for the Tunnel Man. I think the cape is more valuable on it. Oh, that's 13,000 though. The gloves are only 8,800. I'll go with the gloves. But yeah, if you spend all your money, then it's going to take forever to get a tunnel dog. Uh, so yeah, played Hard Reset, played Half-Life Episode 1 and 2. Uh, I really haven't played that much Binding of Isaac since I went on hiatus. Um, I don't know, just haven't really been in the mood. I guess I've been kind of burned out on it. But I have put a ton of hours into it, so a break does me well. Uh, Rob Father, welcome. I never know whether to call you Rob Father or just call you Rob. Because no one really calls you Rob Father. Kind of like Sam, no one actually calls her Skinner. Except me. Oh man, already? Oh man, I don't want to risk going after her because I'm sure the spikes will not be good news. I'll just hold on to the knife. You call that a knife? This is a knife. Yeah, they're both knives. What's your point? Went to see it. Oh, okay. Next time the ghost is about to come out, I will uh, get by the exit. And wait a little while so you have a chance to see the ghost. It's really not that impressive. It's more impressive looking in uh, <clears throat> in the XBLA version. Oh yeah, I forgot you have to actually activate the knife. I thought you just walk into an enemy with it and it cuts them. Oh fuck! I really don't know if that's meant. Well. Yeah, I guess it is better with than the whip because you can hit stuff above you. To run, you have uh, an assigned run button, but you can also hold down the action button to run. Which is kind of instinctual for me from like uh, Super Mario Brothers. I tend to hold down that button in every 2D platformer I play. And you really don't want to run all the time in this game. If you hold down the run button, you're going to have a bad time. Is either one of the knives a, ch a spoon, perchance? No, what do you think this is? Knifey Spoony? I don't want to play Knifey Spoony. Oh, uh, what? How did that bat hit me? I got robbed. And yeah, knifey spoony sucks. Let's play hungry hungry hippos. You know, I'm not really sure if you can actually jump out of spikes when you're standing in them like that. I mean, obviously, <clears throat> if you jump and you fall back in the spikes, you're gonna. Okay, yeah, you can jump out of the spikes safely. You just don't want to land in them. The one nice thing about this game is that the traps also affect all the enemies. As you can see, that spider just impaled itself on the uh, on the spikes. I guess you could call it a spiker. <laughs> oh, it's the tunnel man. He digs shortcuts. He needs sixty-eight thousand two hundred dollars for a new shortcut, and I have twenty-one thousand nine hundred, so I can pay for about a third of the tunnel, give or take. A little less than a third. If you don't sacrifice the women, you're going to have a bad time. Well, I haven't come across an altar yet. When I come across an altar, if I'm doing okay on health, I will make a sacrifice to the gods of evil. No, if you will excuse me, I have to procure another beverage.
Oxbow, welcome to the chat room. Private Steve says, how do you do that? Type a slash, and then the letters M-E, and then a space. That will let you perform an action in an IRC chat room. If you, f if you feel up to it, try typing a slash and then the word trout. That's the most fun you can have in IRC. Although, I don't know if this IRC chat room... Well, no, I guess not. I think that's a, a native MIRC function, not a native IRC function. MIRC is a popular client for IRC. I used to think MIRC and IRC were the same thing back before I, before I understood the internet. Back in the uh, grizzly dial-up days. I wonder if I can actually hit this frog through the uh, through the tree. Probably not. Now these trees you can climb even if you don't have the climbing gloves. But uh, since I have the climbing gloves, I can climb any other vertical surface. Just drop slaps Duke of the Bump around a bit with a large trout. Did that actually work or did you type it out yourself? Because if it worked, I'm impressed. Hold on, I have to try it myself. Oh, he just typed it. He is a cheater. Never mind. Okay. Enough playing around with obsolete chat technology. Although, I guess IRC really isn't that obsolete. Aw, oh, man. Uh, I think I'm going to use a bomb to get my knife back. Hopefully that's close enough. Okay, good. I mean, the knife isn't really that good, but, well, you can kill these cavemen permanently instead of just knocking them out. Normally, if you just jump on them or whip them, it just knocks them out the first time, and you have to do it several more times before they actually die. Then you can kill these plants with the knife as well. I mean, you can kill the plants by throwing shit at them or whipping them, but the knife just makes it a bit easier. That's the, uh, the gambling parlor. One of the many things that this game has in common with The Binding of Isaac is that there are gambling parlors where you can uh, spend money to potentially win items. Or more money. Oh, shit. <sighs> From 1 to 10, how high is the replay value for you, Duke? Uh, I'd say about 10. Probably. I mean, this game will take you quite a while to beat it. Maybe not that high, maybe 8 or 9. Now, The Binding of Isaac is definitely a 10. But The Binding of Isaac, um... I'd say the difficulty in that game is balanced better than the difficulty in this game. That might not have been a good idea. Okay, that worked out. Um, f oh god, Fominha video. F Fominha video, welcome. And Wapa, welcome to the chat room. I mean, the Binding of Isaac is hard, but it's not as hard as this game. I mean, I've never even made it past Area 4 of this game, or, uh, shit, area 3 of this game. <clears throat> I, I don't even know how much more there is to this game. And there are a lot more secrets in this game from, from what I understand. And I don't know how to get any of them. So yeah, this game is a, uh, a learning experience for you and me both. They made Binding of Isaac too easy. Uh, I don't know if that's true. I mean, I still die plenty of times in that game. And I consider myself pretty decent at it. If you think Binding of Isaac is too easy, this is the game for you. Uh, let's see, I could waste a rope and go explore that other area to the right. I think I'm just going to get out of here. The XBLA version is probably more replayable. Well, I don't know what you're basing that on. Duke, do you own Super Meat Boy? I do, but I don't really like it. 
That's not really the kind of game that I enjoy. Uh, we have a crate of uh, flares to help us navigate our way through the darkness. If you don't have a flare handy, then the dark areas are not going to be that enjoyable. Let's see if I can kill the snake with a flare. Now the flares stay lit permanently unless you, they uh, are submerged in water. So as long as you can hold on to one, you're in good shape. Uh, Trans reality, welcome to the chat room. Now I'm not sure what it means when the, the trap head has fiery eyes like that. I, I don't know if that's just the default for dark areas or what. Now the traps seem to work the same. That was almost a sticky pickle. But I made it out no worse for the wear. Yeah, the, the trout command is MIRC only. People in the, uh, in the chat room are a bit confused about that. Yeah, MIRC is an IRC client that you can use to connect to... Uh, ah, that you can use to connect to uh, Twitch or just in TV chat rooms. But, uh, it's not a very good chat client. I don't recommend it. The only good thing about it is the, uh, the trout command. Um, uh, you know what? I'm done here. But yeah, Super Meat Boy. I think I beat it. Well, quote unquote beat it. Because you don't really truly beat Super Meat Boy until you do all the uh, the dark areas, quote unquote. And uh, the only way you can really beat those, or the only way you can unlock them, I forget exactly how it works. But you have to uh, do well. Basically, you have to speed run the levels and get a medal to unlock the dark version of the levels. And I'm not interested in anything that requires speed running. Uh, the item I picked up is the, uh, the eye. It shows you, uh, where all the treasure in, well, I guess in any level is buried. You can see gems inside the, uh, the terrain now. Useful to have, but not the most important thing ever. Uh, Minecrafter Field and IR Stupid. Welcome to the chat room. I see a few new names, so, uh... If this is your first time to the stream, I'm Duke of the Bump. I play whatever video games strike my fancy, and sometimes I uh, say funny things occasionally. Um, if you like the videos or the streams, please follow me on twitch.tv, uh, twitter.com slash dukelps, facebook.com slash duke of the bump, youtube.com slash user slash musherin, all the links are in the thing. And uh, add me on Steam. My Steam name is Duke of the Bump. Oh, and uh, Formspring too. If you have questions you want to ask me, ask them on uh, formspring.com slash Duke of the Bump and I might have an answer for you. I'm trying to... Uh, ah, there we go. I was trying to jump up here so I could get this pot. Because I love pot. Oh, and uh, you really should be following me on my main Twitter account too. Twitter.com slash Duke of the Bump. Because I post things there that I find amusing. And I occasionally get retweeted, so sometimes other people find them amusing. Possibly. I'm being modest, people. I'm fucking awesome. Follow me on everything. That, that's not me. I was playing a character there. But seriously, do it. Uh, Dark Rune, welcome to the chat room. So what kind of run is Duke doing? Just a regular one or a City of Gold run? Well, I don't even know what City of Gold is, so uh, it's not going to be that. Basically, I'm just playing and trying not to die 
and trying to pay money to the uh, the, the tunnel man. That's pretty much it. I'm not using any kind of walkthroughs or guides or anything for this game. I'm just doing it blind in 20 does. Although it's not really blind because I played the game before. See, the caveman is just, just knocked out because I just hit him with the whip. If you jump on him, like, I think three times, he dies for good. Hmm. I apparently went the wrong way. Oh god, I'm gonna have to use my last bomb to get out of here, aren't I? I, lo I love it when the trap is behind a spider web like that. Alright, I'll stick around for just a few seconds so you can see the ghost. I love what it does to the music when the ghost is about to come out, too. It's like the Chopped and Screwed remix. Okay, Tim and Ez, calm down. In the XBLA version, see, there's a ghost. Not that exciting. It's just a ghost. Oh, Tunnel Man. Already? Well, I don't have that much money. Well, actually, yeah. I, do. I have almost uh, as much money as he's asking for. Wow. That's pretty good. Much bigger in the XBLA version. Ever play Cave Story? Yes, that is one of my favorite games. One of these days, I might stream it. Although I'm sure everyone's pretty sick of that game by this point because everyone's either streamed or LP'd it or something. Come on, jump into the spikes. Jump into the spikes. Oh, we jumped into the spikes, but they weren't out. CPC Gamer said that uh, the best thing to sacrifice to the altar is the caveman. But he was being a funny, funny man because the gods actually don't like cavemen at all. If I remember correctly. I, I think sometimes you might get something for a caveman, but uh, often times the gods will be displeased and they will punish you for your inferior sacrifice. Duke, could I stream Castlevania for the NES? No. Oh god, we got a vampire to the left and piranha skeletons to the right. See if I can. Oh, okay. Now, if I'm careful, I should be able to take these piranha out before they can uh, strip the flesh from my bones. Okay. Castlevania for the NES. Um, I like. Well. Hmm. This is actually going to be a little tricky. I like the Castlevania games. Well, I like Castlevania 3. I don't like Castlevania 1 or 2 that much. Um, 3 I might potentially do one of these days. I mean, Castlevania 2 is fun, but it's just a mess of impossible to solve puzzles. Um, so, I don't really have fun doing that. Uh, Castlevania 1 is just one of those grab you by the balls and twist until you can't take any more kind of games. And uh, not really interested in that either. I, sp I wasted too much time trying to kill that vampire. This ghost is probably going to eat my soul. I do remember liking Castlevania 3 quite a bit though. That's the one where you can play as other characters. Uh, you can play as Alucard. And you can play as uh, some kind of climbing man. I don't know. It's been many, many years since I played that game. Oblivix says, Duke, I added you on stream. Oh, thank you. My wish list is available, and there are many games I am requesting for it. Just a heads up. Nobody bought me anything during the Steam sale. Ah! I have died so many times with those stupid frogs. 
What is Duke's steam? It's Duke of the Bump. Predictably so. I suppose this has been mentioned, but the ghost turns gems to diamonds. Uh, no, it has not. But I would appreciate... <clears throat> I mean, I know that's not really a spoiler per se, but I would appreciate, you know, keeping the game information to a minimum in the chat room. Because I am kind of, you know, trying to do this blind. I mean, I'm probably not going to get much use out of that, uh, that tip. But, uh, just, just a general heads up. Sadly unemployed at the moment, or I'd have gotten you something. Oh, I'm just, uh, I'm just grousing. I don't really expect anything. I have more games than I know what to do with anyway. Sorry you're unemployed though. Unemployed though, that sucks. Good luck, uh, in the job hunt. <clears throat> You can always become uh, a YouTube video game sensation like me. I rake in dollars by the the ones. <sighs> Come on. All right. Well, that worked out fairly well. I'm pleased with the way that transaction occurred. Full house today? What, is there a full house marathon on? Damn it! And here I am streaming for the internet instead of watching the full house marathon. Oh shit! Oh, stupid snake. Stupid spiders. Stupid everything. Alright, let's see if I can hit that web from this angle. Actually, I better jump up here. See, I don't want to hit the spider itself, just the web. If you hit the spider itself, he gets angry, and you would not like the spider when it's angry. Let's see, do I want to use a rope to get to the sticky bombs? Uh, yeah, why not? The paste, rather. Uh, th that, oh, the Toxic Eye, welcome to, uh, the stream. Oh, speaking of superheroes, um, I saw The Dark Knight Rises. I did the marathon. One of the local theaters here showed Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises all, uh, you know, all in one sitting. There are intermissions between, between the movies, but, uh, you know, it's basically you know, a marathon. But, uh, I had a lot of fun. Um, The Dark Knight Rises was good. It wasn't as good as The Dark Knight, but I really don't see how it could have been. Um, but I still enjoyed it. I do think Bane is kind of a dumb villain. Um, but I really enjoyed, uh, Anne Hathaway's Catwoman was awesome. Uh, JGL was awesome, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, because, you know, we're on a friendly basis, so I call him JGL. Uh, but yeah, fun all around. I'm more happy that I got a chance to see The Dark Knight in theaters, though, because I didn't actually see that when it was out in theaters, for some reason. I don't know why. Sad to know it's the last one Nolan is going to direct. Yeah, yeah, Christopher Nolan, uh, he's... He's pretty good. I, I just hope they wait a little while before they try to reboot Batman again. Ah, shit. I tried to jump to that ledge. You know, I really hope they don't pull a Spider-Man and try to reboot the series, like, two years after the most recent movie. I have a feeling they're going to, though, because a bajillion people are going to go to see any Batman movie, and Hollywood likes money. I predict that regardless of who directs the next Batman movie, it is not going to be well received. 
I prefer Tom Hardy's Bane over the two-ton hulking mass. See, I've never, uh... Bane was in one of the Batman movies, like Batman Forever or Batman and Robin or something. But, uh, I never saw that one. Ah, shit! Don't hold the run button, Duke! But, uh, I was never really that familiar with Bane as a character. So, uh... I don't know. I mean, I don't want to spoil anything, but, uh... He just wasn't... I, I mean, no villain is really compelling after the Joker. After Heath Ledger's Joker. But, uh... I don't know. Overall, I give the movie... Seven thumbs up. And The Dark Knight Rises gets 12 thumbs up. That's my scoring system. If you don't like it, take it up with Roger Ebert. That's because Batman isn't a superhero, he's just a rich dude. Yeah, um... I mean, really, in The Dark Knight, Batman wasn't really the draw. I mean, he's the central character of the movie, obviously, but he's he wasn't the best thing about the movie. Of course, uh, Heath Ledger's Joker was the best thing about the movie. And, uh, I forget the dude's name, but uh, Harvey Dent was also really good. You know, those were the two compelling characters in The Dark Knight. And in Batman Begins, uh, I mean, he's not really Batman until... He's not really even Batman until, like, the second half of the movie. And I actually think everything leading up to him becoming Batman is better than anything after he becomes Batman. My, my favorite part of Batman Begins was the first half. And then in The Dark Knight, or The Dark Knight Rises, rather, the most compelling characters are Catwoman and uh, JGL. So yeah, I mean, Batman... I mean, it kind of sucks to say, but he's kind of an ancillary character in his own series, almost. But yeah, I would still recommend it. And of course, you know, the tragic shooting in Colorado, you know, just cast, you know, a shadow over the whole thing. <coughs> because some asshole decided, oh, I want to be the Joker. Oh man. Gonna have to waste a rope to get back up there. Oh well. Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to get into it, but uh, obviously, the uh, the deaths of all those people is more important than you know anything having to do with the movie. And I hope the dude, you know, gets what's coming to him. Uh, yeah, nothing worth going over to the right for. But yeah, that's really the only movies I've seen recently. Um, I was going to go see that movie, Savages, the new Oliver Stone movie, but uh, I haven't gotten a chance to yet. I don't really know if I'm going to. I also really want to see Moonrise Kingdom. I like Wes Anderson. Uh, Giver, 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 welcome to the chat room. I like the part where he can't speak in his mask. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing that bugged me about Bane. He was just hard to understand. Uh, this is a gambling parlor. I'm not going to, uh, to spend too much time here. Basically, you spit, you press the buy button, and you roll the dice, and it shows you on the wall what you win if you roll certain things. I roll a three, so I lose. It's basically a simplified version of craps, from what I understand. And if you get a seven, you get whatever item is behind uh, behind the blocks there. So, let's see, any other games? Um, a friend of mine is letting me borrow his Xbox 360. Um, he's in the army, 
and uh, he's recently been deployed somewhere where he won't be able to take it with him. So uh, I'm looking after it for him Ugh! until he's no longer deployed where he is. Um, he also sent me uh, a copy of Final Fantasy XIII, which I played. Ah, Jesus Christ! I played about five minutes of that just to make sure that the disc worked, but uh, I haven't really gotten into it yet. I mean, from everything I hear about Final Fantasy XIII, the story and everything is dumb, but the combat can be kind of fun. So uh, I thought I'd uh, give it a shot. Yes, there's an altar over there, but there's no uh, there's no lady type friend so far. <sighs> well, I, ha I have seven bombs, so I can throw a bomb without losing too much. Really, the best way to deal with the cavemen is just to uh, to throw them to some out-of-the-way location. Thirteen was okay. Thirteen two was better, though I think. Inzu Draragna is telling me to sacrifice the caveman. Um, I'm not really sure if I want to waste all that time getting back up there. Yeah, there's a chest over there, though. Okay. Damn it, now I'm going to have to use a rope. Uh, and then I'd have to use another bomb to get to the altar. Eh, screw it. I'm out of here. Oh shit. Duke, will you ever play Realm of the Mad God? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I already have so many games in my backlog that it's not really high on my list of priorities, but uh, it's uh, it's in the back of my mind as something I should try one of these days. Uh, Lord Tamar, I forget if I actually welcomed you or not, but welcome to the chat room. Alright. Three more bombs? Uh, that was worth it. Cthulhu saves the world. Yep, that's on my backlog as well. I actually played a bit of that on the Xbox back. Oh lord! But yeah, I actually played quite a bit of Cthulhu saves the world. Oops, not scores. Back on the Xbox before I sold my old Xbox. But, uh, that's a game I want to go through again. One thing I enjoy about Splunky is that you actually have to fall on spikes for them to kill you. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was kind of weird at first that you can just walk through them. But, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I mean, in real life, if you had a pit of spikes and you were right next to them, you can make your way through the spikes without, without getting hurt by them. If the spikes were falling far enough apart. Whereas, if you're falling onto the spikes, it doesn't matter how far apart they are. You know, you're falling and you're spread out and you're going to die anyway. So I guess I can rationalize it. You know, another game about little explorer dudes that came out recently is the... La Mulana remake for the PC. It's the version that was that came out on the Wii in Japan, and it was originally going to come out on the Wii here, but uh, the publisher backed out of that deal, so they just ended up releasing it through another publisher for the PC. And uh, I'd like to play it. I really like the concept of La Mulana, but uh, I mean that game is so difficult that, uh, you, I mean, the original game was so difficult that you're really better off just watching a, a, an LP of it instead of actually playing it. And uh, I don't know if the remake is any easier or not, but, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to give it a try. Has anyone here played it? It's like 15, 15 bucks, I think. This is the bow and arrow. 
the more you hold down the action button, the more it charges up the arrow. And uh, I'm actually not going to bring that with me because then I wouldn't be able to bring the uh, the flare. I will drop it down here though, so I might be able to use it later. Damn it. Okay. <gasps> oh, okay. Wow. That, uh, the bow and arrow activated the trap. Good. Alright. Aw, oh, it didn't break open. Uh, that beetle thing is actually treasure. It's not an enemy. If you collect it, it gives you, um, a pretty decent amount of money. Or the scarab, I should say. Not the beetle. For the longest time, I thought it was an enemy. CBC Gamer says I didn't like La Mulana because it's so obtuse. Yeah, I mean, that's my problem with it. It's, it's like Castlevania 2. It has puzzles that you would never be able to solve without a walkthrough. I mean, I don't care what you say. There are puzzles where it is impossible to figure out, figure out what you're supposed to do. I need to remember, remember to pause it if I'm going to read the chat room so uh, the timer isn't running. Although apparently, me stopping to read the chat room is the worst fucking thing in the world, according to uh, one YouTube commenter, whose name I won't mention, because I forget what it is. But if you're watching, I don't like you very much. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll take the bone arrow with me. Why not? I threw an arrow. And it bounced off the wall. And killed me. See, in this game, the difficulty doesn't come from puzzles that are impossible to solve. It comes from, uh, basically not being careful. Pretty much every way you can die in this game is totally preventable if you're just careful. Which, uh, I'm not. And I'm less careful than usual because I have had a couple, uh, adult beverages. And it may be impairing my, uh, my finesse. I've had, uh, I have imbibed some spirits or two. Or three. I have imbibed a prime number of spirits. It is divisible by itself and one. That is the number of, uh, servings of this particular spirit. I have consumed. <sighs> I really want to get up there. Man. Should I waste a rope? It's just gold. And there's a pot over there. There's probably nothing else. Up. Oh. Okay. I knew I could make it if I just applied myself. But now I'm stuck. There's a box down there though, so it would probably be worth it to use a rope and a bomb. But then I'm gonna have to use another bomb to get the uh, to get the lady. Well, let's see what I get from that box first. If I get bombs, then I'll be more inclined to use another bomb. Oop! Shit! I went in the door instead of climbing the rope. Uh, Mister Drethamighty, welcome to the chat room. And Zexim, welcome to the chat room. They're guessing how many drinks I have imbibed. Lord Tamar says seven. And Zudrarachna says 151. Uh, hate to disappoint you, but both of those figures are just a little bit too high. And by high, I mean I've also been smoking marijuana. No, I haven't. I, I've never actually done that. 
No, alcohol is pretty much my limit. Five. Yeah, that seems like a more reasonable figure. Of course, my servings might not be as large as some people's servings, so it's probably still not a huge amount. I don't really like drinking a ton. I like drinking just enough. That's kind of my jam. But yeah, Drunk Spelunky. Drunky. Drunky. I wouldn't even say I'm really drunk. I'm just a little bit tipsy. Ah, crap. I'm already down to, to two hit points. What you drinking? Uh, rum. The same bottle of rum that I was drinking from during the last stream. Nicely mashed. Yep, that's the term. Anyway, it's time for this fella to go to bed night, guys. Okay, see you later, CPC Gamer. Thanks for making it. Our game 80, yes, indeed. Yo ho ho, a bottle of rum, etc. Well, let's see. I can buy springy shoes, which let you jump higher, I think. Or I can buy the cape for 13 G's. Pitcher's Mint. I'm not entirely sure what that does. I think it lets you catch projectiles. Or, or no, it lets you throw projectiles more dif more, uh, more difficult. It lets you throw projectiles harder. I don't. I have no idea what spectacles do. I think it's similar to the eye. Uh, sure. Why not? Actually, I think the springy shoes. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely jumping a little bit higher. I think they also affect uh, the distance you can get from jumping on an, an enemy. Ah. Oh well. Actually, springy shoes are probably just going to be, uh... I probably just want to make things more difficult. It's probably like, like the, speed the speed shoes in a Sonic game. I mean, speed shoes never really help anything. They just make you run faster and make it more difficult to, uh, to maneuver. Uh, Odin 337, welcome. I will choose to ignore you, Darkrun, since you say you keep spouting game info. Your chat messages are dead to me. Dead, I say! So let's see, um, I went over video games I've been playing, have I been playing anything else? Let's see, here's what I bought during the Steam sale. I bought Half-Life 2 Episode 2, because all I had was Episode 1, and the original Half-Life of course. I bought Civilization 5, which I haven't played yet, and uh, I'm kind of hesitant to play because I've never really played a game like that before. Um, I mean, I've played turn-based strategy games, but not ones as, as deep as Civilization. But it was like $7, and I thought, you know, I should really give the genre games a try. So I picked it up. Um, I picked up Might and Magic Clash of Heroes, which I have not played yet. In fact, the only game I played that I, that I bought is uh, Episode 2. I picked up... Uh, God, I, I know there's others. It's 
it's in my uh, Steam recent game list if anyone's curious and they want to go look it up. But yeah, I haven't played in anything that I've purchased yet. Oh, I bought uh, Metro 2033. And I bought Dear Escher. Esther, Escher. And I bought, um... Ooh, I think that's it. Not a huge haul of games, but, uh... You know, considering that I have, you know, literally dozens of games that I bought on Steam and haven't played yet, because I bought them during previous Steam sales, I really didn't need any of the games. Aw, oh, man. That was the worst possible way that key could bounce. Stop holding down the run button. God... Damn it. Okay. But yeah, that's pretty much it. There were a few games that I wanted to pick up. Um, the Walking Dead. But, uh... I don't know. I mean, it was on sale for like... 17, 16 or 17 dollars at, at one point. I really should have gotten it then. But, I just never did. Oh, well. See, now that I have my springy shoes, I can actually jump up there. Which is nice. I don't know if I can jump to where the Ido is, though. <sighs> I might have to use a rope. Ah, damn it! I was holding up to see if that would help with my jump, but uh, I ended up walking in the door. Oh, on the plus side, I can completely pay this guy off now. So next time I can start I can start right from the jungle. Uh let's see. Have I ever played Kings of Amalur Reckoning? Nope. Where does he keep his ropes? In his bunghole. Uh where does he keep the bombs? In his bunghole. Where does he keep any other item he picks up? In his hat. And if he can't fit it under his hat, then in his bunghole. But yeah, I, I really didn't pick up as many games as, as I thought I was going to. Uh, which... <sighs> I tried to grab onto the tree. Oh well. I have my shortcut, so I can just immediately start there now. Instead of going in the start door, you go in here, and you can start from level 5. By the way, how's the audio? I, I probably should have asked that like an hour ago, but I haven't recorded in a while, and my audio settings may not be at 100%. Hopefully they're fine. Audio's good. Okay, good. I noticed that my volume was slightly lower than I usually have it, so I have the game volume a little bit lower than usual to compensate for it. Uh, let's see, do I want to risk the spikes or do I want to risk the water? I think I'll take my chances with the water. The game isn't overpowering me at all. Okay, good. Uh, Sai-Chan, Sai welcome. Has it always been Sai-Chan? I, I think I always said Sai-Chan because I didn't see the second eye. So I apologize if I uh, offended you or your ancestors. <gasps> oh my god, I thought I was dead. The monkeys are more of a, an annoyance than anything. If I remember correctly, they don't actually hurt you at all. They just uh, throw you. Which means there's a chance that they will throw you into spikes or into an enemy. If the dude keeps all his stuff in his ass, then he must have had a lot of anal sex. Well, uh, that's a little rude. You shouldn't speculate about people's sexual lives. I really don't think that's any of your business, is it? Sally I Chan says, surprisingly common, don't worry about it. You know, I had someone come into the chat room several streams ago. I don't think they've been in recently. But their name is 
corgi and a top hat. And I interpreted the na interpreted their name as corgi in a toe fat because they spell top hat all as one word T O P H A T. And of course, toe fat isn't a word, so their name didn't make much sense. But then I realized there was they were trying to say top hat, and it made much more sense. See, it was confusing because every other word in their name, they put an underscore to designate a space, like corgi underscore n underscore a underscore, but then top hat was written all as one word, which is why I read it that way. So corgi and a top hat, if you are hearing this at any point in the future, I apologize for, uh, <coughs> for getting your name wrong. Corgi and a two fat. Fat spelled P-H-A-T. Pretty hot and tempting. Is what P-H-A-T stands for. Or so I heard on the internets. On the urban dictionaries. Of course, it might be a backronym. It might not have originally stood for that. I don't know. And I don't claim to know. Have we gotten to play the Xbox version yet? Yeah, it's good. I played a little bit of co-op with Moores and a couple friends of ours, but I could tell that they weren't really that into the game. Um, well, part of the problem was that they just have a, uh, a standard deaf television. And this game does not look good on a standard deaf television. Some Xbox games are fine. They uh, scale really well. But in this game, everything's kind of already so small that on a standard deaf TV, it was really difficult to, uh, you know, to keep track of where everyone was and to see what was going on all the time. Which, you know, I mean, it's not their fault. It's just, uh, it's just one of those, one of those things. That's kind of sad considering the apparent utter idiot chaos of multiplayer. Yeah, we played a little bit of deathmatch and, I mean, it was kind of fun. It would be more fun on an HD television, but, uh, I mean, I enjoyed it. I mean, I was saying earlier that I'm kind of disappointed that the Xbox version doesn't have online multiplayer. Because the multiplayer, the co-op at least, would be much, much better if you could play online. And you wouldn't have to worry about following, you know, whoever the camera was on the whole time. I mean, as it is, it's kind of like Lost Vikings, where uh, the camera is always on one person. And I think you can switch the camera. Actually, I'm not really sure if you can or not. I know that if a person dies, then another person takes over the camera. And if, if the uh, person who dies gets resurrected... You know what? I think I want to bomb rather than use a rope over there. Since I have seven bombs. But uh, if the person who dies gets resurrected, then, you know, they don't get camera control back. Uh, but I don't know if you can actually switch the camera between the players like you can in Lost Vikings. But it's really not... I should have... It's really not ideal. Um, online multiplayer would have been a lot better. But, you know, it's still a great game, and it's still worth, well worth, the $15. I mean, it, w it would be worth it just for the single player, because this game, you know, it's kind of like The Binding of Isaac. I'm sure you could put dozens or hundreds of hours into this game, depending on, uh, depending on how good you are at it. And in my case, that would be not very. Ah, shit. I hate frogs, man. If you try to jump on a frog while it's underwater, it's not going to work. You're just going to take damage. The jumping is just so erratic. I really wish that flaming frog would just jump into the spikes. But it didn't work out that way. I think I was up to 1500 plays before I reformatted my computer. I wasn't that high. Um, I had a few hundred deaths. Uh, 
before I, I lost the save on my old computer. Yeah, I mean, the co-op does have the new Super Mario Bros. Wii factor, where you can kind of fuck with each other. And, I mean, that that's fun, too. But, uh, if you just want to, uh... Wow. I don't know what happened there. I pressed the jump button. I meant to jump towards that tree, but it didn't happen. The potential for cooperation is completely outweighed by the potential to screw each other over. Yeah, uh, it's I call it the Battletoads factor. Because that was the original game where the co-op had that aspect to it. I mean, Battletoads is much more difficult co-op than it is single player. But, I mean, you know, in a way, that's part of the fun. But if you're just interested in doing just a, just a straight co-op play, then it makes it much more difficult. Now these vines, I don't know. I don't know if I remember how to jump from vine to vine without falling in, into the spikes. Um, I think all I have to do is hold the direction and jump, and it'll automatically grab on. I don't know if I have to press up or not, but I will. Uh, Okay, yeah, I guess you do have to hold up. I think there's an easier way to do that, though. Like, if you hold down the action button, he'll just grab onto it. Uh, Broken D-Pad, welcome to the, to the stream. Oh, a shop already, huh? Well, I don't have anything. I should try to steal something. No, I shouldn't. That's a bad idea. Because I have no way to defend myself. And all the shopkeepers have a shotgun. That's uh, something that you're going to have to deal with if you decide to be a thief. And if you piss off one shopkeeper, every shopkeeper in the game from that point on is also pissed off. So, you, you know, if you want to steal, really weigh the consequences. Alright. See, right now I'm just jumping and then pressing up at the right moment to grab onto this, to the vine. But I'm sure there's an easier way to do that. The shotgun is instant death. Yes, indeed. It does not matter how much health you have. The shotgun will take you out. Like in Zelda, where you get renamed Thief. Yes, exactly. Although in Zelda, it's more forgiving because you you can use the shop after that. Your name is just permanently changed to Thief. So that the whole world knows of your uh, misappropriation of goods and or services. Now one fun thing you can do is feed the cavemen to the plan, but I accidentally knocked the plan out instead. My plan backfired on me tremendously. Because I then got hit by the caveman who regained consciousness. Zelda is worlds more forgiving. I read a pretty interesting article about uh, the original leg Legend of Zelda on the NES and how exactly they got the controls in that game so good. Because the original Zelda was a tile-based game, but because of tricks that they did, it does not feel like a tile-based game. Everything is actually arranged on a grid in that game. Um, I'm gonna have to blow that thing up. There's no way I'm gonna survive if I just try to jump. But yeah, everything in, in the original Legend of Zelda was on a grid. But, you know, they were brilliant because the way they programmed it, it doesn't feel like it. But the, the article explained how if you move to the left just a few pixels, and then you start moving up, Link automatically corrects for, you know, the pixel difference, and he realigns himself to the vertical grid. And you really don't notice it unless you're really paying attention. But uh, it, it's pretty ingenious how they program that game so it feels just right. 
I actually believe the shotgun does four hearts of damage per bullet. I'm not sure if I'm remembering that right either. Well, it's effectively instant death for me because I'm never going to have more than four hearts. Or if I do, I'm going to uh, fall into the spikes or some other ridiculous instant death. Get eaten by a plant? That's, that's instant death. That's a bad one. Looking at my shoes, that's a paddling. Making fun of my beard, that's a paddling. Paddling the school canoe. Oh, you better believe that's a paddling. Simpsons reference, and I died. Uh, Rius, welcome to the, to the chat room. Or Rius. Oh, there's another frequent viewer whose name I always misinterpreted. Uh, his name is Narpus Narpus's Sword, Narpus Narpus Sword, something Sword. But I always referred to him as Nar Password because it was written all as one word, N A R P A S S W O R D, and I didn't know it was supposed to be Narpus Sword until he followed me on Twitter. And I saw his name spelled out how he actually intended it. But you know, I mean, I really can't be blamed for making that mistake. I mean, if you saw the letters N A R P A S S W R D, you would think it says NAR password. Because NARPUS isn't a thing. I mean, neither is NAR, but. I mean, that's how you're going to interpret it. As soon as you go out of the shop, he shoots you. Leave a bomb dead. Yep, if you try to lay a bomb in the store, he immediately shoots you. NRA password. No, I don't think it's the NRA. It's the NAR. There might be an offshoot of the NRA. The National Association of Rifles. Hey, that's not very nice. You know, on the day of the Dark Knight Rises shootings in Colorado, the official NRA Twitter account tweeted, Happy, uh, let's see, what was it? Yeah, I guess it was Friday. Happy Friday, shooters. Any plans for the weekend? And, you know, it was well after, um, the events had transpired so it was I don't know it was kind of tasteless and that's why you always throw the pot well away from you because if you throw it right next to you a spider is going to jump out and eat your head Oh, another game that I've been playing that I haven't really talked about, I, I don't think I've talked about it, is the, uh, the You Don't Know Jack game on Facebook. I've always loved You Don't Know Jack, and I usually don't play games on Facebook at all, but the Facebook implementation of that game is actually very good. I've been playing it pretty much every day for the past month and a half or so. You can play one game per day. And it's only five questions instead of the usual uh, 10 or 11. Well, four questions plus a jack attack. Which, you know, I'm okay with. You know, it's a little 10 minute slice of trivia per day. Give or take. And uh, it's a really good version of the game. Now, obviously, you, you can't play with other people in the same sense that you can play the old You Don't Know Jack games. You, you can't screw your neighbor or anything like that. But uh, you play asynchronously, and you uh, compare your score to other people on your friends list. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. If any of you are playing it, and you would like to play against my scores, let me know, and I can tell you my, uh, my Facebook identity name. 
aka my government name. Because I, I, I don't really use Facebook for uh, for anything besides you don't know Jack. I, I don't post on there or, or anything. Duke, have I played... Uh, I, I assume you mean draw something on omgpop.com. Yeah, I played draw something for a little while uh, on my phone. Uh, it was kind of fun, but it has two main problems. The first problem is not enough words unless you pay. But they may have corrected that because it's been a while since the last time I played. And the other problem is people will just cheat and they will just write words instead of drawing. And it makes the game extremely not fun to play against those people. Because what's the point of playing a game like that if you're going to cheat and write words? I really wish there was some way to report people who do that. So their accounts can get flagged, and then if, uh, if enough people report them, then they get banned or something. It's draw my thing on the internet. If you play it on the website, you don't have to pay. Well, you don't have to pay uh, on the phone version either. Um, you just get the the word the word bank. If you don't pay, is extremely extremely limited. Um, but you know, the, I mean, the website version might, uh, might take care of that. Aw, uh, I was really hoping the caveman would just walk right into the plant. But yeah, I mean, un unfortunately, it's just a fact of life that cheaters are always going to be an issue with those kinds of games. <laughs> You can play on the computer, you get unlimited words. Well, I mean, the word bank can't be unlimited. I mean, there has to be a certain number of, uh, of words that it draws from. No pun intended. <laughs> you get five words. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, in the, in the phone version, you have, like, four or five words that you can choose from that you want to draw. Uh, th that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the total word bank. Like, y you know, you see repeats all the time in Draw Something. So even if you have four or five choices to choose from, you might very well have already drawn all of them before. Or, you know, if somebody starts drawing something, it's a lot easier to tell because you've seen you know, all of the words in the word bank. So you're like, oh, well, I saw Shrek come up as one of the options. So this green blob thing that they're drawing must be Shrek. And, you know, it's, it's already pretty easy to guess because they tell you how many letters are in the word and they, they give you a pool of ten letters. So it's, you know, it's already pretty easy in that respect. I don't know. I mean, I have fun with it, but it does not have a lot of staying power. Uh, Jack Burton, welcome to the chat room. I see you have selected a new username. You used to be 3 Jack Burton, but now you're Jack Burton with the A replaced with the 4. So you've leveled up, apparently. On the computer, you have to totally guess there aren't any mixed words. Well, that sounds better then. I might, uh, I might give it a chance. Uh, Iron Man EXE, welcome to the chat room. Uh, I guess I don't really need any of that stuff. I haven't seen many maidens lately, iron or otherwise. What did I get? Oh! Spike shoes, sweet! I don't know exactly what these things do. I think they make it, uh, make you do more damage when you jump on enemies. Like, you can kill the cavemen by jumping on them, instead of just knocking them out. Uh, Sore Thumb, welcome back. 
and B-U-C-W-L-D, I'm assuming that's Buck Wild. Just so you know, if you play Draw My Thing, make sure to send me a message, I would love to versus you. Uh, well, watch the uh, Twitter or the Facebook. If I start playing, I'll give my, uh, I mean, I'm sure my username is just want to be Duke of the Bump, but um, I'll give my info out there. Uh, let's see. I have four ropes, but I only have three bombs. I guess I will use a rope. Whew! That was almost bad news. What? I totally landed on that frog. What the fuck? That quote is excellent out of context. I totally landed on that frog. Yes, the frog. The toad, whatever it is. The amphibian. I took a risk there because it was fairly close to the beginning of the level. And uh, it worked out for me. Sometimes it is good to take risks. Hey, parachute. That is good for one use, and if you take fall damage, or if you would f take fall damage, the parachute automatically deploys. And it looks like uh, it's going to deploy now, because that is a pretty big drop. I actually don't know if you can land on enemies while you're using the parachute or not. So, uh, I didn't risk it. I risked that, though. Boy, did I ever risk that. I'm glad I got the shortcut. Last time it took me a lot longer to get the shortcut to level 5. And I, I don't know why. What?! Why did that hurt me? I landed on the goddamn frog. I stepped on it. It died. Why did I hurt? Why was I programmed to feel pain? Don't land on him or lick him. You're, you're allowed to land on the frogs though. It's not like... See, look. No problems with that frog. But every once in a while, they'll screw you. Well, that caveman is just traipsing through the spikes. Like it ain't no thing. Yes, the monkey will, uh, will steal things from you and he will, uh, I did not think I would actually make it up there. That's why I was not prepared to deal with caveman insanity. How did I... I'm really surprised. I have no idea how I did that. Wow. I did a running jump from the vine and I made it. The physics in this game can be kind of weird sometimes. I'm gonna have to use a rope here. Well, maybe not. This game is all about risk versus reward. See, I risked climbing up that totem without getting spiked, and I made it. My dog is sniffing my keyboard. Yo, dog, I heard you like keyboards, so I put keys on your board so you can type while you type. <laughs> well, that wasn't good. Okay, well, every time I die, I learn from my mistakes. Theoretically. See? Very simple mistake I made there. Don't hold the run button. 
eventually this knowledge will form permanently in my brain. See, right now, I am not holding the run button. Look at how I'm not holding the run button. I'm walking at a normal pace. I thought it, it, it was every time you die, I take a shot. Well, that would not be a very healthy drinking game. Maybe if you take a shot every time I die doing something stupid, that'd be a little bit more liver friendly. I don't know. I do a lot of stupid things though. At this point I'd have no liver. Well you don't have a liver anyway, just drop. I'll try to... Don't try to wave your liver around at us like, like you're special or something. I want that chest, but I don't want to deal with this frog. Or that piranha, come to think of it. Now, see, in that instance, me jumping on the frog while it was underwater actually worked. I think if you're above the surface of the water, and you jump on the frog, it works. But if you're under the water and the frog's also under the water, then it, it doesn't work. I don't know. I'm more pickled than a Vlasic, says so just drop. I always like that word. Vlasic. It's one of those words where there are no other words in the English language beginning with VL. Well, I mean, I guess Vlasic isn't really English. It's Yiddish or something. But it's just uh, its just kind of a cool word. It's like smegma. There are no other words in the English language that begin with SM. Or SMEG, rather. There are a lot of words that begin with SM. Smashing... Smelling salts, smarch. Man, I wish it was smarch. This heat has been oppressive. But it's the only word that begins S M E G. Is there anything over here, or am I wasting my time? Some gold. Oh, yeah, there's an idol. As you can see, the uh, the trap for the idol in these levels is different than the trap in uh, the cave area. And Vlad. Oh yeah. Vlad the Impaler. Uh, Lightbone, welcome to the chat room. Did I say Smeghead? No, but I wish I did. That would be a pretty good thing to say. <gasps> How... Did I not die? See, the thing about running is that if you if you use the action button, which is the whip button or the pick up button or the throw button, it doesn't immediately start running. It takes it like a second or a half a second. But if you use the run button, it immediately starts running. Now there are situations where you have to run, so you can't you can't just go the whole game without ever running. But when you do run. If you're not careful, then you won't start running when you think you are supposed to. I'm bad at this game. Now see, I'm using... See, also, it doesn't... Like, if you... I'm holding down the action button right now, right? But I'm not running. You have to actually... Like, if you hold it down and you just jump nothing happens. You have to actually move a little bit. So, uh, I say this has been a pretty successful stream so far. Hasn't been one of my best, but it hasn't been one of my worst either. Uh, pokers, uh, welcome to the chat room. Alright, let's go one more. I'll play until I die. Since it's almost uh, 9 o'clock. Okay, one more. <laughs> I 
But yeah, what do you guys think of the stream? Have you liked it? Has it been a positive experience? Or would you rather I just go back on hiatus? Why? Fuck that, man. I got totally fucked by that frog again. If you take that much damage that early in the game, you might as well just start over. Sword Thumb says no hiatus. Midoriko says I've enjoyed it. Tivaness is a very good stream. Okay, good. I have a feeling Retro Week was not that popular because the games that I was playing were not particularly popular. But you know, I play the games that I like. That's kind of my thing. So, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm glad you like the stream. Hopefully you will like the stream in the future. But if you don't, then I'm probably not going to change anything. I liked what I saw at Retro Week, I just wasn't available to watch a lot of it. Well, it's all it's all on the YouTubes. <gasps> I made the same mistake. I was using the action button to run, and I... The delay caused me to fall and take damage. Anyone who's new to the stream, all of my live streams are available on my YouTube channel, which is, which is linked underneath. And there are several services that you can follow me on um, to get updates as to when I'm streaming. There's a Twitter. Just follow me on everything. I'm pretty cool. Uh, Mr. Tenro, welcome to the room of chat. Oh, this is going to be tricky. <sighs> I should probably just use a bomb here and get it over with. If I actually tried to jump down there, I'm sure I would have gotten spiked. Of course, now I'm going to have to use a rope to get out of here, too. The problem with some of the games was that they weren't very watcher-friendly. Well, you know, I'm not really the best judge of what games are watcher-friendly. I mean, Spelunky and The Binding of Isaac are pretty much my go-to stream games for being watcher-friendly because they're different, you know, a little different every time, so in theory they're always going to be entertaining. Alright. I might as well try. Caveman, sacrifice, go. What do I get? Kali accepts the sacrifice. She seems pleased with you. But I didn't get anything from it. Don't know what happened on Saturday. Better than the Guild War shit that was that was on Saturday. I, I don't know what, what you guys are talking about. What happened on Saturday? Is this something I should be aware of? They had open beta. Oh yeah, yeah. Morse Draconis is in that. It's an MMO. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with it. Was everyone streaming it or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, be I bet there were. <sighs> well, let's see. I'll wait for that caveman to come back over here and break my fall. And then I will throw him at the frog. That's the plan. As for this frog, I don't know. There I go, holding down the run button again. Old habits die hard. <gasps> Damn it! Damn frog! I condemn thee to the blackest pits of hell. From hell's heart I stab at thee. Uh, Galen Rayleigh, welcome to the stream. Unfortunately, it's not going to uh, 
to go much longer. I have two hit points left, and as soon as I die, probably gonna call it quits for the night. After I make my big, groundbreaking, mind-blowing announcement. Oh man, you guys better hold on to your uh, posteriors because this is gonna be a big one. Next retro, we pull out the NES randomizer. I'll see. I mean, that's even worse because then I get games like Speed Racer or. Lee Carvello's putting challenge or uh, foosball massacre. You know what? I think I will go one more. One more time, we're going to celebrate. Oh, yeah. All right. Don't stop the dancing. I could try sacrificing the plant, but I don't think God would be too happy with me. See, if you just float, then you're not going to be able to jump on the frog. If it's near the surface, and I can, like, come at it with significant force, then that's one thing. Next you know, he's selling his something for a head of Splunky. Yeah, this game is pretty addictive. It really has that one more game, you know, that one more game urge that, like, the Binding of Isaac has. Which, you know, is kind of a, uh, a staple of roguelikes. A point SS, or A point SS. Is that a URL? I don't want to go to the website a.ss. I don't think there are going to be good things there. Oh, well, speaking of URLs, I recently discovered that the, the URL gamefarts.com is available. And it's not like a ridiculous amount of money or anything. Now, gamefart is not available. But gamefarts is. And I think that actually sounds a little bit better. It kind of invokes the, the feeling of like game facts. I was I almost bought it, but I really can't justify that kind of expense. Although it would be the perfect URL to set up like a portal to all of my gaming and uh and LP. No, that was the the deleted word. Yes, I know. I was just being dumb. But yeah, for all of your uh, Duke of the Bump gaming needs, check out www.gamefarts.com. Speaking of roguelikes, what do I think about Torchlight 2? Well, I mean, that's not really a roguelike, but I am excited for it. I like the original Torchlight quite a bit. I mean, this game's not really a roguelike either, or The Binding of Isaac. It's a roguelike-like. But Torchlight... I would classify more as just an action RPG, Torchlight or Diablo. Because, uh, I mean, there is like a hardcore mode, but generally, you don't have to start over every time you die. I would probably never play Torchlight or Diablo or anything like that in hardcore mode, just because it's so much of a time sink. If you do die, you lose just hours and hours of progress. Whereas in Binding of Isaac, you, I mean, you technically lose the progress, but you're unlocking new items as you go, you're unlocking, uh, you know, new characters, new areas of the game. So I, w I would classify that more as a, more of a roguelike than uh, Torchlight. But I still really enjoy Torchlight, and I am looking forward to the sequel. Here's hoping it uh, comes out soon. Well, I have to go. Alright, see you later, Private Steve. Thanks for watching the stream. 
Thank you for being a friend. That monkey was making me nervous until he leapt to a bloody death. May the warm winds be at your back, Game Farts. Yeah, that's uh, that's my game. That that's my gaming website's motto. How'd you know? You fucking! Ugh, I hate frogs. Most annoying enemy up to this point. I knew if I pressed my luck, eventually that would happen. All right. Well, that about does it for Splunky. A uh, big, huge, monumentous, groundbreaking announcement. I hope you guys are ready. Drum roll. I am going to start doing Google Plus Hangouts. I uh, did one the other day. Just Drop was there. He was pretty much the only one who was there. Um, other than Chibi UFO, who isn't here at the moment. But, on days other than Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's not going to be like a regular schedule for it. I'm just going to kind of announce it, just, you know, fly by the seat of my pants. But, I'm going to post on the Twitter or the Facebook when I do a Google Plus Hangout. And you are all welcome to come and hang out. Um, when Just Drop was there, we were watching uh, Game Center CX. It might be uh, watching YouTube videos. I might be doing a little bit of gaming. Um, you know, just casual gaming. It's not going to be like... I'm not going to be recording them. I'm not going to put them on YouTube or anything. It's just for fun. So yeah, the normal stream continues as normal. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, 7 p.m. 2300 UTC. And on other days, uh, I might do some Google Hangouts. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can watch the Hangout without having to sign up for Google Plus since it's public. Uh, if you want to participate, I do think you need a Google Plus account. So you should register for that if you want to participate. Um, but yeah, uh, add me on Google Plus too. I know I ask you guys to add, to add me on everything, but uh, this is an additional thing. This is probably the last thing I'm going to ask you to add me on. Uh, but I'm Duke Bumpington. Oh, Mors Draconis. Welcome. Just blew two hours on Crusader Kings 2. Damn. But yeah, uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to announce the hangouts on on the YouTube. So make sure you follow the Twitter or the Facebook if you want uh, to know when that's going on. Uh, but yeah, the, the next one will probably be uh, watching more Retro Game Master because that show is cool. So if you're not interested in that, then uh, you know you probably won't be interested. But come and hang out, hang out anyway. Bullshit with uh, with me and with anyone else who decides to join. I totally meant to watch this. Eh, no biggie. I didn't accomplish anything anyway. Alright, well, that is the big announcement. I hope your fragile hearts could take it. Uh, if you are having heart palpitations, please contact the emergency room as soon as possible. Uh, I'm Duke of the Bump. The next stream will be Thursday at 7. There might be uh, a hangout between then. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah. Whenever it occurs, I will see you then. And uh, I love you all. I love each and every one of you. You are the wind beneath my wings. See you later. <laughs>